old fashioned approach. Um, center drilled. Ready to match this ball bearing. Uh, this will go down in the recess here, so I'm taking out the center, and then this tool then will guide, or the, the drill there will guide the bore. And I've just uh, used this here now to um, get it all nicely, let's say, trued. And with this system, we then replace the now, uh, let's say, used center, which was used for the original actually it was used a little bit smaller also first but anyway then uh, to make the center here and then the one here that is uh, 14 millimeters to make that center which fits so that i can support this full spin between the inner and outer ring so i, have, I only want to have support for the outer ring of course and now i will need then this uh, 14 mil guidance here in the middle and a cutter that is 22 to fit this bearing race here which is a little bit shy of 22. Okay, center relieved, so to speak. So here I'm trying to get a rough idea how much I'm going down. I know the ball race is uh, eight mil. So I'm going down to where approximately I have this brush with the top surface there. Set zero so like so and then i go up to see what there is there Good enough for a my word. So then this is accompanied by a couple of thrust bearings. Uh, on this side I guess I have to take out that edge because it was so little left. So taking that flush so that I get some more then to put the thrust bearing to. Now it is very tempting to use the same setup. Uh, since everything is now possible to be guided like that but as you can see here or at least if I point out to you this fo fo fouls the let's say uh, the casting here that body there I would like to do that so time for a cup of coffee so what are my options to cut this flat to this and uh, with enough uh, radius here so I have the this as a seat for the thrust bearing well I could use an end mill apparently another alternative at least one of them but not the best this would be another alternative namely to <coughs> mill off from the rear here like so on an angled uh, plate or if you have a vertical support there but I think the best uh, way to do this at least in, when you have the mill like me is to use uh, the horizontal arbor like so and in here 
I'm not secured it here and also bolted it down and then it's 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 straightened so then we'll sink it into the body here and then of course uh, I'll go around like this something like that I have um, milled out, taken out a little bit on the top and bottom here, so I'm certain it lies flat. And um, <coughs> then clamp down. And the considerations, of course, here is that you'll have to clear the Ys here. here and here as well as of course testing the depth and this only just clears the top here but i think we are sufficiently down i think this shows the ability i have with the, my type of mill here namely that this is a suitable application for horizontal milling. So we're just pulling this out. And uh, as you can see here, I put this on because I wanted to get as close to the cutter as possible. Not, not any uh, great difference but uh, then the support is as close in as possible but because I want to go deep down there with that cut cutter I can already see here now there's going to be a shortcoming here that means I will have to take this out further out here Well, you can see it's not exactly horizontal, uh, doesn't have to be. Um, and I'll lock down this to lock down the extended uh, supports here and then this here so that these are locked, the head here is locked. Then this, um, this one here has now enough room here to move a little bit in and out. That's my setup. So now I can move it, I've centered it like so, so I'm uh, locked on both other axes. So I'm using back gear and uh, slow speed, feeding down. Okay, I think that's enough, just going out to see, and up again. So yet another good application for the mill here to show this uh, versatility. Or so uh, simple job, seating for the ball bearing here, and then of course. As always, my versions will come out a little bit different, but I have a thrust washer back here. And then I have a sleeve with a 
neck here. Not much of a trick really, but uh, to point out when I'm turning these small uh, pieces, diameters that are a little bit fiddly to mount in the chuck, I use, uh, in this case, I use just an arbor made out of a, a bolt and then a couple of nuts and then mount this uh, assembly in um, the chuck jaws. Then I snug it up so that the piece mounts to the face of the chuck keys, chuck jaws, and then I just uh, tighten the bolt afterwards and it's ready to be turned. This I turned uh, so that this will be able to be snugged up against that. That's not going anywhere anyway because that's on the just on the inner race. So the outer race now, which supports that is free to move. When I tuck this hard, it's still free to move. All bearing conversion finished. Moves very freely now. I think this proved to be a nice uh, upgrade. Nose like. And very little resistance.